jargon just from this this interview alone no. and Miami ain't even said much <laughs> but everything she did so I was like oh I'm, I'm gonna take that I'm writing that down live my life YOLO I appreciate the <laughs> advice wrap it up for the ones I don't want to impregnate yes I please all of that <laughs> I, I really don't see nothing wrong with you keep having kids because I like when I'm ready I'm gonna do it too call me <laughs> <laughs> we going all the way up this has been the Daddy radio the city girls in the building Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Sinister One, broadcasting live from the City of Champions. And welcome to the new show, Raw Discussions for the Black Community, but afraid to ask. And as you see here, I'm going to let my guys introduce themselves. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to let you know exactly what's going on with the show and what's going on today. So starting up in my upper left, you see Viana Marie. And uh, just let them know who you are and your credentials. And... I'm Viana Marie. I am a uh, R&B rap artist um singer writer mother and uh you know person with an opinion so that's what we're doing <laughs> down in my bottom right hand corner if you live in the city of brockton uh you know this guy below us emmy award-winning newbie Rateau of newbie Produc productions Steve, thanks for having me on uh newbie Rateau, um film teacher and uh in documentarian and then bottom left, my man Kevin Jeffries, host of Happy Hour with Lito. Let him know. What's going on? Thanks for having me. You know what I'm saying? Podcaster, um, designer. I do a little bit of everything. So yeah, we're going to talk today. And before we came into the show today, we showed a little clip and what this discussion is about. And as you guys can see over my shoulder is a picture of Nick Cannon wearing a Save Black Boy shirt. And I like to say that that's kind of hypocritical with the actions that he has going on in the discussion that we're going to have today. Um, the clip that you guys just saw was from his podcast with City Girls co-signing on this behavior that's made the news of Nick Cannon fathering all these children. Um, he's had three baby mothers in the last four months. And one of the things we want to talk about on this show, raw discussion for the black community, are things that we glamorize, but behind the scenes we're mad about, but we never discuss it. We never bring it to, to, to the top of the surface and break it down. And the fact that everybody's out here kind of glamorizing and co-signing on his behavior and fathering all these kids is very upsetting to me. My feeling is, is I don't care what shows he hosts and how many things he owns and what money he gets from what networks at the end of the day, he can't provide fatherly emotional support for all these kids. He can be there financially all he wants, but um, he just can't do it, you know, from a, from a father perspective in my mind. So I'm going to start off first with Viana's opinion, because I want her to talk about this because city girls co-signed on this. And, and it just surprised me. It just upsets me that a woman would co-sign on this behavior. Well, the my first response is, of course they would. They're the city girls. Their whole, um, what what, the kind of music they put out and what they talk about in their music would definitely co-sign this kind of behavior. Um, I think that the issue is that it's so normalized within our community amongst those who couldn't afford this that the first thing they go to is, well, you know, at least he can financially be there because a lot of the times you have women that utilize these men as a form of income. And so they have babies and then they take their baby fathers to court and they get a child support check. Um, I, I think that this is something that we don't deal with in our community because we want to praise these men that are financially taking care of their kids and forgetting that finances are only one part of what it takes to raise a child properly. 
So, you know, um, my opinion on this has changed, by the way, in a lot of ways, um, because I, I am not angry. I'm not upset at Nick Cannon for doing this. I think that this is goofy. I think this is something that is completely um, typical of rich black men in this time period right now. Um, so I, I, I think that he's a goofball for this. I, I don't, I'm not angry at him, not mad at him. I just think this is, you, you have access to all these women and you're basically u- utilizing your platform as a way to, you know, father these kids. So that's I, to each his own. I, it, it, it's, it's appalling, but he can afford it. And that's basically what it comes down to is can the courts don't care about these kids' emotional well being. They're going to be, financially taken care of. So. Newbie. Okay. Newbie, you've done a lot of filmmaking, documentary, hitting on some, you know, serious topics. And some of those topics, you know, is black on black violence. And, you know, a lot of that black on black violence comes from the fact that some of these kids do grow up without a fatherly presence. Um, some of them may have that financial presence, but they don't have that fatherly presence. What are your thoughts on this whole thing? Well, you know, I did um, a documentary. I, let me preface it by saying I'm not a father. Um, you know, I, I have many students who, uh, you know, see me as a big brother type of father mentality, but I'm not a father. And I don't want, you know, speak about, you know, the duties of a father, you know, but I am a son. And, you know, I, I've, you know, dealt with, uh, you know, my parents and my father was there and present and, you know, really raised me the right way. But I did a documentary on fatherhood called Step Up. This is about, uh, I did about, I think about six years ago. And, you know, didn't go out publicity, but I still feel like it's our most important documentary because it's really the foundation of a family. It's being have, able to have two parents in a household. One out of three people in America don't have a parent in a household. And the black family is two out of three people in the household. Okay, so that's 66% of black families with no father in the household. All right, so I, there was, there was someone in the documentary who really broke it down for me. I thought it was a great way of breaking it down. He says three types of people, okay? A dad, I'm sorry, you have a father. Anyone could be a father. You have a dad, and then you have a parent, mm. okay? And he, he was explaining how a parent is there every day. They're in their house. They go to the teacher, parent-teacher conferences. They don't just, you know, show up. They help you with your homework. They're not just there for, you know, birthdays and in Christmas and give you gifts and give you money every single week. You know, that, that, that's, that's, that's a, you know, that's a dad, that's a father, but a parent, Nick Cannon can't be a parent. I mean, just, just, just geographically, everyone's not going to live in the same place. They probably have different locations. They live with the mother more likely than not. So that, that's my biggest problem with this is that clarifying that, okay, he or she, those kids will be taken care of financially, but they're not going to have a parent in the household. That's number one. Number two, I, I want to relate it back to sports a little bit. Those are time, I don't know if you guys remember Marshawn Lynch during the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. He used to always say, I'm here if I won't get fined. You know, I'm just here if I won't get fined. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, go Marshawn, go Marshawn. Yeah, you know, that's my boy. But I'm thinking like this, listen, Marshawn Lynch and Nick Cannon, their fans, a lot of them are black and poor. If they were doing the same thing, they would have been fired. If they did what Marshawn Lynch was supposed to do in, in, in the press conference and didn't talk. If they did that at their job at finish line or Walmart, they would have got fired. Okay. So they can do that because they're rich, all beautiful, but they need to realize their fans are poor, especially the minority ones. Nick Cannon, your fans can't get away with that. Okay. No matter what color. Okay. And so your fans can't get away with that, but they're seeing and think they could, but you're rich and that's different. So it's not necessarily Nick Cannon or Marshawn Lynch or any other people. It's what they represent and who their fans are. That's my issue. Mm, Okay. Much, much deeper. Kevin Jeffries, over to you. Um, I just have to agree with, with everybody. Um, this is clown work to me. Um, uh, for real, it's it's crazy because there's a guy, he lives, he's from my city. He probably was on, he went on a talk show. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but he was on there. Matter of fact, Ayanga fixed my life when she had that, right? 
she had a bunch of black men on that were fathering a bunch of kids, right? But they didn't necessarily have the funds. And this guy, he probably had 20 kids and she was trying to, you know, get him right. I think, I think it's, you know, there's a bunch of, um, you know, reasons, his, his reasons are as far as Nick Cannon, you know, his religious beliefs and he feels like it's all right to do it that way. You know what I mean? And um, I, I seen him on a breakfast club. He was like, be fruitful. But when, <laughs> when we say, when we hear the term be fruitful, we're talking about in marriage, bro, like with your wife. But he believes that, you know, what he's doing is he's providing, you know, income for these, these ladies. Um, they're going to take the check. And then in return, he gets a chance to have them bury a seed. You know what I mean? Um, there's me personally just speaking from someone who grew up without a father. I don't care about the money. And something like time is something that you can never get back. And it's going to be really hard for him to be in one place at all times in these children, these these kids' lives. So it's 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 clown work to me, bro. I can't I can't be behind that. And, and we're and glamor. I, what, go ahead, dude. No, I, I just want to say, you know, no one, you know, even my family. I think everyone's family. No one plans to have different, you know, mothers. You know, so you know, you know, that's what happens. Relationships work out. They don't work out. That that's the reality of life. But I, I'm pretty sure everyone to a heart would say that wasn't their intention going into it, was 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 to be with multiple people, you know. So that shouldn't be glamorized because that never should be the intention, you know. Life happens, yeah. Life that relationships don't work out, and you know that's that's life. It happens, and you move on to someone else, and hopefully that person makes you happier, and you might have kids with that person. That's beautiful, but it's never the intention to go in with having so many different mothers for your kids. It's never the intention. So that shouldn't be glorified. And those, those, I don't want to say mistakes because life happens and people change, but those lessons should be taught and, and, you know, and talk to the next person. Okay. You should do this, this, and that better. What bothers me also about this whole thing is the double standard. And this is going to go to Viana on this one, because, you know, we, we put the futures, like I said, in this situation, Nick Cannon is big news right now, but before Nick Cannon, we had DMX, over 10 kids. We had Future, a ton of kids. You know, all these guys out there who just don't care and they father all these kids, yet if this was a, a, a Cardi B doing this or if this was a female artist doing this, trust and believe me, it right. they'd be dragged through the freaking community and yep. be shamed and be labeled. So as a, as a, female, ar uh, <laughs> as a female artist... As a female artist, what are your thoughts on that one be on the double standard? Because we all know what would happen if this was a female artist who was saying, I'm gonna take everybody's seed and take my time off and get that check. Well, there's a there's always a double standard when it comes to women. Um it it is what it is. There's there's a reason why my personal life is personal, because it does not it 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 directly affects how you move out here in the business world, people's personal opinion on your personal life. Um, so I guess uh, with Nick Cannon, it's kind of like you're, you're, you're sighing because he went from being this married, this married man who seemed to be really in love with his wife. And, you know, they, they were together for eight years, I think it was. And um, they had their kids and, you know, hearing his explanation as to why he's doing what he's doing now, it's like, you know, living your best life should never include it, fathering children all over the place. And I, I don't know if that's more a personal opinion or a staple that we should all live by. I mean, we're living in a different day and age where um, being a parent geographically is, you know, you, I guess you can do. You got video chatting, you've got, you know, all, all these different ways to personally connect to your child. So, I mean, I don't know if, if, with you know everything um, progressing the way that technology has progressed, if that has um, catered to this attitude, that this is something that's definitely possible. But um, I, I just, I feel like, I, I guess I just wish that he would take it more seriously. I feel like he thinks that this is, is a cute joke. 
you know, oh yeah, I got all this money, so I'm gonna have all these kids. And you know what I mean? I feel like if he kind of, if he took it a little bit more seriously and maybe had an explanation to as to why he wanted to do this, that that made a little bit more sense, people would, would take it more seriously. But I really like what um, Newbie had to say um, about this this whole dynamic is this your fan base they don't have your pockets they don't have your bank account so you know this is something that happens in our community all the time it's not just rich black men that are out here doing this it's poor black men that are bouncing <laughs> from couch to couch yeah. that have no nothing to their name outside of you know and no 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 beef with anybody who's working at McDonald's, but that is not a salary that can cater to seven children with seven different women. You know what I mean? So it it is what it is when you when you come right down to it. You your fan base is primarily on the middle to lower class. You know, because I don't really know any rich black men that are looking up to Nick Cannon and being like, yeah, that's my dog. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't see that. And you know, when you start being around different circles of people, you really get to see the different in dynamics. Nubi, I know that you've been able to see that different in dynamic that difference in dynamics. So this this is is all shocking to me. Like Nick Cannon's whole attitude is very, very shocking to me. I would have never pegged him as this type of person before this year. I'm surprised Nickelodeon has still kept him on, you know, his his CEO status. Um, I mean, he did get Nick Nickelodeon where it is. He's He's very involved with the network, so I'm I'm surprised that they haven't come out and made some type of statement. Do you think we'll ever see a time where a woman would be accepted with this type of act actions, or no? You don't think we'll ever see that? You think the double standard will stay in place? It'll always no, I, be in place, I think. I, I mean, I I think we're progressing along nicely, but not that nicely. And I mean, we can't tell what's going to happen in 25 years from now, but. You know, right now women are are leading the wave when it comes to equal and fair treatment. This is a different thing. You know what I mean? Men men covet sex a completely different way than women do. So when a woman does something like this and they have multiple baby fathers, they're looked at differently than a man who has multiple babies mothers. It's just it it, it that hasn't changed. I don't see it changing anytime soon. Kevin, you wanted to add on to that? No, I was just agreeing. Um, I don't think, you know, if it was a woman doing it, it it would be 100 times worse the way people feel. You know what I mean? Um, no matter what the excuse is, like I said, these religious beliefs and stuff like that, you know, that he's using as his reasoning. I just, I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> so real quick i'm gonna put up a uh picture for everybody here this is the nick cannon's baby timeline i'm gonna put up on screen here for you guys and we're gonna talk about these mothers of of his kids um as you guys can see we've got mariah carey in 2011 she had twins from nick cannon while they were married and then he moved on and um he ended up getting with britney bell and they have two children in 2017 and 2020 now moving into 2021 nick cannon was pretty busy under covid because he got abby de la rosa she's a dj uh he got her pregnant with twins um she had her babies on june 14th of this year and then Alyssa scott who appeared on this new season of wild and out and last season of wild and out she's one of the wild and out girls and here's the sad thing about this this girl Alyssa scott she had her baby just just a week just a week after Abby De La Rosa on June 23rd, she's a wild and out girl. And here's the thing. If you've watched wild and out, this whole thing has been a running gag on the show. And that upsets me even more at the fact that the fact that he sleeps with the women on his show is a running joke. And I see newbie on your head. You're familiar with this, right? It, it upsets me. And it just, this whole thing of her getting pregnant and having this kid just plays into the running gag of Wild and Out. And I'm sure it's going to be brought up on this season. You know, it's funny, you know, if you were to talk about who's, who's Wolf's, you know, looked at the worst in terms of being more promiscuous, Cardi B or Nick Cannon. I mean, Cardi B only has one kid, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Second on the way. Yep. Only one kid, okay. second on the way. Yep. So, I mean, you. Same you guy. Cardi you know, Her you husband. thought Cardi B was, you know, and I don't know what she does, but obviously she, she's running around. She's. She's protecting herself, and then she's having kids with someone she wants to. But um, 
you know, but it, you would have thought that Cardi B is, you know, is this running around this this whore that running around, you know, sleeping with different men. Now, that's in in if she's doing that, okay. But and then she's she has that perception of someone who runs around with different men. But Nick Cannon, like you mentioned, DMX, rest in peace, and all these NBA players, Sean Kemp, you know, mm -hmm. all these players. Oh, it's 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 nothing, you know, and and that right there. Um, needs to stop, you know? I, I, I think, um, you know, black women really have it the worst in this country in terms of perception and everything. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, you know, men have this privilege that needs Ooh. to be acknowledged. They do, men have a privilege that needs to be acknowledged um, and, 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 and understand that there's a double standard, you know? Um, and, and that needs to be fixed. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a certain level of privilege that that um they need to check themselves on. And well, for the record, let's let's go on the record and say Cardi B is married. She's been married and has children by her husband yep. who cheated on her, by the way. So, you know, and I don't she, know where this person even comes from, but the only thing that she's ever been known for in the press is being a stripper. And even That's when it. she was on Love and Hip Hop, she was not promiscuously sleeping around with a whole bunch of different people. Yep. So, you know, we can we can clear that up right now. So you you see how it how the double standard works too with future and all his baby's mothers, and then you know, people want to drag Sierra into the middle of it for marrying, you know, buckling down and getting married and, and having Russell um Wilson. Russell Wilson be a father to Future's child when Future doesn't make himself readily available and he's, um, you know, a millionaire or, you know, superstar or whatever. So you, you're absolutely right with this double standard to the, to the point where you don't even know, you didn't even know that Cardi B was married. You know what I mean? Right. This is how bad that is. You right. didn't even know she was married. She just revealed that she was having another baby um, on stage at, what was it, the, the BT Grammys? BET Awards. BT Awards. BT Awards. Awards. Yeah. So, you know, like the, there's most definitely a double standard. There's always been a double standard. Women have been, you know, used as property pieces and moved around on a chessboard between their fathers and husbands for years. It's only been the last 30 to 50 years that we have not been looked at as property. And there are still men walking around right now. I saw a girl get slapped around on the street by some man and not one person said anything. Not one person. I almost pulled the car over. Now, That's a whole you know another I mean? discussion. It, it, it is, it is. But but <laughs> but you brought up um, two off topics that I would like to touch base on with you. Um, you talked about Cardi B and the cheating, and you talked about Sierra and Russell Wilson. And this is another thing that, that kind of goes in line with that double standard. Cardi B was dragged through the mud because she chose to stay with her man. You know, when she decided that I was going to stay with my husband and fix my marriage because we got a kid together, they dragged her through the mud. When... Russell Wilson and Sierra got together. You would think that everybody would be happy for Sierra and moving on for future, but no, it was the opposite. People came out and dragged Sierra through the mud and said, oh, she's just looking for that check. Why is our community like that? Why are we so quick to tear people down when they're doing something positive? Especially women to women, because you did see a lot of black women say, oh, she's just looking for that check. Or she's just because staying with her man because he's a check we perpetuate this ghetto ratchetness as being glamorous because it's been glamorized in film and media for our whole lives. That's why when you go to places and you go to areas where there aren't a lot of black people, they assume that all black people behave that way because that is how we are depicted in the media, on movies, in film. What? How many great films did Denzel Washington do before he finally got his Oscar? Training day. And who was he in that movie? A dirty cop. Yep, training day. Yep. You know what I mean? And how many films before that did he do that would have garnished him an, an, an Oscar on performance, on content, on all of those things? And he got his first award being a dirty cop. Yep. I mean, it just goes to show you we allow this in our community. I'm going to give that to newbie. I mean, give that let to me, the filmmaker. Let me jump on that. I thought you really made a great point. I think, um, you know, when we talk about who's glamorizing this, who is glamorizing it? And, and we talk about who's in charge and who are the executive producers and who are the directors out there. You know, a stat that was kind of glaring was less than 2% of directors 
okay, are people of color. So 98% of the stories you are seeing are how other people perceive black people and black people are watching it and the cycle continues over and over again. You know what I'm saying? So that's why that representation is huge. You know, so we need number one need to be represented well. And once we're in the position, okay, of, of power, it's our obligation to show ourselves in a positive <clears throat> light. Cause if we don't do it in a positive light, this, continue to do what the 98% of directors are doing, it's all for nothing. It's, it's, funny, nothing. it's funny you say that too, because when you look at the, the negatives and the positives, let's go with Black Panther, Marvel. That movie was such a positive movie for the black community from Ryan Coogler, a black director, that it almost changed our community. Black Panther came out and a lot of people were woke. i seen people uh-huh. woke from just a superhero movie, and it's crazy. Kevin, nod your head. You're nodding your yeah, head. You want to talk on fact. that? No, it's I was crazy. just agreeing. Man. You know, and, and you're right. You know, for years, we put out all these negative images. We jump on all these negative films, and then Black Panther comes out, and it's amazing that it, a positive superhero black movie comes out with, and it was loaded with just black positivity, and everybody accepted it. Everybody Keith, accepted that movie. Keith, what's the name of the... um? The female director. She directed um, the uh, the movie about the uh, the people over in uh, Central Park, the Central Park Five. Oh, the Central Park uh, Five. Yes, and I forget her name. She, Selma, just she directed the Selma movie. Yes, and, and it, it, I'm, I'm gonna look up her name in a little bit. But someone like that, in terms of changing the narrative, you know, of, of the Central Park Five, and now they looked at listen. These boys weren't guilty. Not only were they guilty, she put the she put the system on trial for that. That's you know, right. and really started that whole movement, and that's why little small things like that of representation. Ava you know, Marie uh, Duvet, du- you know, Duvernay. I mean, even I'm looking at the Enterprise right now. They, I know they just hired a, a a black female Haitian reporter, and I'm seeing more stories positive in the Enterprise in Brockton. You know, so little things like that. You know that that starts to change the narrative. So we don't see Nick Cannon, that we don't see the that being glorified. Small little steps like that is what's really, I think, going to move the needle. All right. We got about two minutes left to this show. And, Ava you DuVernay. Know, yeah, I remember yes. you. Ava, yep. DuVernay. Ava, Ava Marie DuVernay. And again, a lot of, we've got a lot of black filmmakers and a lot of black producers and directors who are really stepping up and, and, and getting these Netflix deals, getting these movie deals, getting these Disney deals, and showing black people in a very positive light. I know somebody that saw Black Panther who was not of color, and they were like, wow, I never thought I would like a movie like that with an all-black cast. They're like, what are you talking about? You know, this is, <laughs> what, what did you expect? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I know my family, like, rented yeah, but- out the whole um, theater at that time. <laughs> I mean, we took over the whole. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> that was that was such a cool. And I'm not a big superhero. I mean, I like Batman and some of the Superman, but I'm not huge on it. But the Black Panther, I had to see that. I I, I just I was telling you, I'm doing a video camp um, in Brockton, and a, we're doing like different angles and stuff. And most of those angles are um, clips of the Black Panther. Nice. All right, we got about well, one minute. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say it was amazing what you could do with um, black films with a budget like that. I feel like black films don't get the same kind of budget when they're trying to do so- do stuff. So they really showed what, you know, what people of color are capable of doing when they receive the same type of time, attention and budget that these other major films get. Yeah, I think People they don't think get- it's all about money. <laughs> Everything's about money. How much money do you get? How much are you going to receive? Pay your actors, pay for the, you know, the locations and the spaces, all of that. Down to and I, we got to give props to Kevin Feige for that because Kevin Feige allowed Ryan Coogler to bring that vision to Black Panther, and he's doing the same thing right now with Shang-Chi, where he's going to bring that big Asian presence, that Asian culture to Shang-Chi. So, guys, we're at 5.30. Um, it's time to take a breather here, let you guys announce your social media and where people can get in touch with you and reach you for this first episode. Um, and we're going to go around here. I'm going to start off with Kevin first, let you give your how people can get in touch with you and follow your show. 
Yes, sir. My Twitter is um, at Lido's Happy Hour. Um, Instagram is Lido's um, Happy Happy Hour with Lido Pod. Um, my show is all over. It's everywhere. Um, Apple, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Google, um, and then on YouTube, just type in Happy Hour with Lido. Viana Marie, new music coming out. Let them know how they can follow you and see you online. I am at vianamarie.com. You can get me on any social media platform. It's always Viana Marie, V E A N A M A R I E. Newbie, you're out there grinding, filming a brand new documentary. You want to tell people about that real quick and where they can find you? Yeah, so uh, newbieproductions.com, N O U B E productions.com. You'll follow us on Facebook, Newbie Productions on Facebook, Instagram, Newbie Productions on Instagram. Um, documentary or God willing, we finish it by the end of this year and be ready to premiere in 2022. Great stuff. Great stuff, guys. This is your boy, Sinister One. I want to thank everybody for tuning in for Raw Discussions for the Black Community, but afraid to ask. As I said, this is going to be a four-episode show, and it's going to be done three, th- four shows a year because um, we want to make sure that the discussions are raw. We want to make sure that we touch base, and we've got some three great topics coming for you guys uh, that we're going to discuss that are, you know, these are black community discussions that need to be had. And, you know, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Raw discussions for the black community. We'll be back. See you guys in episode two. Peace.